All right, guys. Good afternoon. My name is Hazru, or Halu, or Haz, depending on what accent you want to pronounce my name. So just call me Haz. All right. Uh, great introduction. I think if you want to know more about me, just ask Ashwin, who I want to call Google from now on. All right. <laughs> Hi, Ash. <laughs> All right. Uh, or just Google my name. All right. You find out more about it about me. Okay. So my topic today is how Shopify has disrupted WooCommerce. Uh, iCommerce is actually an e-commerce supply chain company. Uh, it was formed by an amalgamation between my former company, ALM Group Ever Limited. Uh, we did risky WooCommerce software as a service. Um, and today we are more of a logistics company. Uh, so everything that's running on WordPress and WooCommerce is more of a value-added service. All right, so more of a logistics company. We deliver parcels for you locally, internationally, so far, and so on. Um, we are uh, platform agnostic. We don't care whether it's WooCommerce or Shopify. Uh, so this, this topic is actually derived from an experience of about one and a half or so years of uh, running or helping running this company. I'm just a small shareholder in the company. Lah, okay? And uh, we've, we've got a lot of uh, subject matter experts. Uh, I would consider myself the WooCommerce subject matter expert in the company. Another colleague of mine is a Shopify expert. We are also a Shopify partner. So uh, we've got a lot of uh, you know, uh, exchange between each other on what Shopify is and how WooCommerce uh, had pros and cons and so on. Uh, Reese, Reese from Shopify, APAC, actually came over to our office to uh, have a chat with us and so on. And uh, we had a frank and blunt discussion about the differences between Shopify and WooCommerce. So um, <coughs> have any of you actually used Shopify before? Yeah. Oh, really? A one? Sorry, higher, please, so I can see. All right, so there, WooCommerce. Much more, of course, right? <laughs> Anybody hates WooCommerce? <laughs> Anybody loves Shopify? One guy, two. Okay, great. Awesome. All right. So <clears throat> just to give a brief about my presentation, uh, I'll try to be brief as much as I can. Uh, it's, it's all in order. This is very army like because you know Singapore is NS, right? Okay, so uh, introduction to presentation that I'm presenting you right now. All right, I'll be sharing a little joke, It'll take about two minutes. Uh, I might skip the about me because hey, thanks. <laughs> All right, um, and then we'll go on to the final details about it. All right, about this presentation. So, <clears throat> this is not the joke. Huh? So, <laughs> All right, uh, thank you for coming to WordCamp on a Saturday. I'm sure a lot of you have uh, better news of your time, um, but uh, you probably need some time in between Saturday and Sunday. Right? Now, if you notice, this presentation will have a lot of cats. <laughs> All right, because I'm a cat lover, I have two cats at home. Uh, but really, thank you for coming. Um, but since I'm a cat lover, I'll share about a cat joke. So, um, <laughs> You're killing the pun, man. Come on. <laughs> All right. So, what does where does a cat news to shop online? An online catalog. Oh. Uh, I probably should not quit my day job. Anyway. <laughs> all right. That's about me. Thank you. It's all there. <laughs> all right. So yeah. Um, on top of that, I actually uh, co-wrote a book called Flow. It's a book of uh, Malay Muslim entrepreneurs in Singapore and how we contributed to the uh, ecosystem. So if you'd like to buy the book, it's only $15 or $16, if I'm not wrong. Just go to my website, hazroazahar.com. Buy a book from there and you support me. Okay? So <clears throat> let's skip over to the presentation proper. So anybody knows which came first, Shopify or WooCommerce? Ashwin? <laughs> no. First time you're wrong, Shopify came first. All right, so Shopify actually came first, and then WooCommerce a year later. All right, Shopify is born in Canada. Any Canadians here? No, one. Hello. Proud of Shopify. <laughs> All right, so uh, this is the timeline, growth of Shopify versus WooCommerce. Uh, in the beginning, back in 2015, there's not much difference between the two. Um, the blue is, um, obviously WooCommerce, the green is Shopify. All right, uh, notice and back in 2015, they got very similar points of growth. In 2015, WooCommerce was bought over by Automatic. 
in quite a hefty acquisition. In uh, 2015, also, Shopify actually went into their IPO. All right. So <clears throat> today, Shopify powers, sorry, WooCommerce powers about, um, well, if you took WordPress into consideration, 27% of websites in the world, uh, there's about 3 million active installs according to uh, WordPress.org, active installations for WooCommerce. So that actually, based on um, Shopify's uh, investors report, Today, Shopify is uh, running about 500,000 websites or e-commerce stores, rather. All right. So, why do I say that based on this data? Why do I say that Shopify is actually going to disrupt WooCommerce? All right. When actually WooCommerce is far more pervasive in the world. Okay. I'm show you a bit more stats. All right. Market share. <clears throat> so this is from uh, Data Nines. All right. So it's third party. So the stats that I showed you earlier, this is actually from uh, the companies themselves. All right? So WooCommerce claims to have 3 million active installations. Uh, Shopify actually uh, has, based on the investors report, 500,000 sites. So third-party data analytics site actually uh, brings down that number far lower, particularly for WooCommerce, and I find that very surprising. All right? Uh, Shopify actually runs about 242 sites. This is based on the most latest data from Data Nice. You can see the reference over there uh, on, on the link. All right, and WooCommerce currently runs about 478,000. Now, in terms of ranking, WooCommerce is still number one, undoubtedly. All right, Shopify, if you go to other kind of sites that are built with and so on, the trends say that Shopify uh, is somewhere around five, number six. But here in Data Nice, it says number two, right? Between uh, built with and Data Nice, Data Nice is considered far stronger. And I'll take site for some reason, All right? But so most of my presentation I'm just going to refer to data nice rather than uh, built with, okay? So uh, <coughs> I, I come back to the point. Hey, why is there such a big gap between what they say and what third parties actually say? All right. So basically, there are three kinds of lies: lies, them lies, and statistics. By Mark Twain, who happens to have a cat. <laughs> All right. So I, I just leave this statistics in your mind for now and that just get just get you thinking about why that is, why the growth of WooCommerce is there and why Shopify uh, is steadily growing. All right. Nature of Shopify versus WooCommerce, right? So um, basically Shopify WooCommerce can I will just give you an analogy. Uh, they're about the same as Apple and Android, right? WooCommerce is open source, Shopify isn't. All right. So um, if you would compare between that, in terms of the infrastructure or the architecture, Shopify is just like Apple, it's proprietary. Um, it's easy to start for a noob. There's a lot of uh, high quality teams and plugins, and you have to pay for most of them. Um, but it doesn't burn a big hole in your pocket for a lot more power. All right? WooCommerce, on the other hand, is just like Android, it's open source, it's great for developers. You got a lot of high quality teams and plugins, but you know, just as many poor ones, and uh, it's free. But it gets expensive with premium plugins and customization. All right. So the, the key thing I, I, I want to drive at is that uh, the f ultimate reason why Shopify is getting better and better is simply because that it focuses on the customer experience. It focuses on the onboarding. Right. All you have to do is go to Shopify.com, key in your email address, password, whatever you want to do, sign up, immediately get a site. And WooCommerce doesn't help you do that because you know you still need to download WordPress and then you need to download WooCommerce and then you need to well figure out that part. You go through the WooCommerce onboarding dashboard and then after that, okay, you still need to build your site, right? Because then you still need to do install or a team. You need to figure out the other plugins that comes with WooCommerce because a lot of stuff in WooCommerce doesn't go out of the box because you know it's still a lot of things to go. So Shopify has a lot of things baked in. All right, and these are the key features in any store owner that uh, they just want to get off running off the block very fast. So just don't want to waste any time. If you want to start on uh, Bootstrap instead of get engaging developer, a lot of things today are just very simple. You just start off the block. All right. So this is why I say Shopify is disrupting the WooCommerce space uh, because previously you got to have a developer to build a site for you. And as disruptors go, all right, now you can do it yourself. There are a lot of uh, page builders out there like Wix, Wibbly, and so on, killing pretty much the lower tiers of WordPress developers out there. Right? The best developers who are worth their salt probably still surviving. Right? But <clears throat> today, just to get a site started is simple. 
you no longer need to think so much about it. Shopify in Singapore, uh, I do have I, I do have the stats on the slides here. Shopify in Singapore is a recent entrant. They've got good partnerships with um, in years have partnership with Singtel that didn't work out. Um, so what happened was that they decided to just wing it on their own. And last month they had a Shopify meetup for the first time. So I had a back and forth with Riz Ferner from Shopify. I said the only thing that's stopping Shopify from really growing here in Singapore is that you don't have a meetup. There's no community. All right. So probably he took my advice. <laughs> so the first meetup we had about 30, 40 people. Probably a lot more than our first WordPress meetup. All right. Back about seven, eight years ago. All right. So you go on make sure of good uh, uh, people around there, much much developers, mostly store owners. Okay. So the thing about WooCommerce is that, you know, it sells that limitless customizations and control, right? Pretty much everybody agree about it. You want to do something that's really, really awesome, you can just open the hood, type in some code, and get a lot more control because it's there, it's in your code, right? But if, here's the problem, you know, with great power, it comes great responsibility, as uh, Peter Parker's uncle used to say. And most developers you know, don't take responsibility of, of their code. A lot of code out there for WordPress, not just WooCommerce. A lot of code out there is actually very bad code. There's no standardizations, right? I mean, WordPress does push for it, but a lot of people actually don't follow through. Right? And that's something I wish um, WordPress developers, uh, me and you, uh, push for more often. Because, you know, well, there's, there's too much bad code out there. And the problem still falls back to you because I mean, there's a problem, you got to bug that, right? So, I forgot to show this slide. <laughs> so, yeah, um, here's the thing. Um, y y you've got to uh, bend with the flow. How do, you dis how do you disrupt the disruptor? Okay, WooCommerce. If anybody here from WooCommerce? I, I thought that's your sponsor. Hey, where? No, it's hiding. Okay, never mind. <laughs> So there are some ways that WooCommerce can actually fight back. All right, uh, if you base on my data nights slide, you know Shopify is not far away. All right, um, I, I'm just guessing the, the only reason why data nights detects only 400 and so thousand uh, WooCommerce sites is because that although uh, WordPress says that there are three million active installations, uh, not all of those installations actually ping back. You know because data nights are built with actually news pings. Uh, from different domains to, to sense what uh, platform you're running on, right? So it might be turned on so many active installations, but nobody really cares about there's so many, most of these installations, right? So the nice probably captures, uh, actually it captures most hundred, the, the first million Alexa sites and the next million Alexa sites as well, right? So Bruce Lee needs to say, be wet like water, my friend, and I think WooCommerce needs to bend a bit, all right? WordPress actually offers both um, seamlessonboarding.com and the limits power, right? Everybody learned WordPress through .com in the first place, right? Before this, you all on Blogger, and then after that, you know, hey, WordPress.com came around, and then you sign up, hey, WordPress.com is much better than Blogger, right? So you all started this way, that seamlessness, and then you, you realize, hey, actually, there's a .org, and you can download the code, and that's the beauty of open source, right? Now, <clears throat> the thing about WooCommerce is that there's no seamlessness. You don't go to WordPress.com and then suddenly you get a WooCommerce sign. And I'm puzzled. Since the acquisitions of 2015, I was expecting that to happen. But it didn't happen that way. I'm still wondering why. So the only thing that Automatic actually needs to do is just, go, just make WooCommerce.com seamless. Sign in, get a sign. Hey, now I have a WooCommerce store, right? And you can still give away that power for free, right? So, so this is my first advice. Be like water, turn on seamlessness in WooCommerce.com. Second advice I want to give is that, you know, um, yeah, okay, blah, blah, blah. Right, so third advice rather. Start WooCommerce merchant communities alongside WordPress user meetups. Uh, I'm not sure whether I guess I've not been involved in Meetup for quite a while. Um, but WordPress uh, merchant communities need to spring up. That means that merchants themselves need to come in. Uh, WordPress developers probably need to have 
uh, some kind of specialization in WooCommerce and start to, you know, bring in smashers into these meetups. All right. Thirdly, is to empower and recognize more WooCommerce partners, lah. Rather, fourthly, empower and recognize more WooCommerce partners. I, I understand that to be a WooCommerce partner is a very stringent process. Um, I'm not saying that Shopify is more slack in this field, uh, but I'm sure that um, it's a, a bit more easier to be a Shopify partner if you can prove that you can bend some code. All right. Uh, fifth, simplify and make plugin pricing more sensible. If you've been to WooCommerce.com, pricing is shitty. Right? You got your WooCommerce pl main plugin, and then you want to add a bit more power here and there, you've got to install a ridiculous pricing of $149. Mm -hmm. Right? of different type of plugins to make your site work. But if it's on Shopify, most of the stuff, you know, it comes baked in, right? Um, fifth, oh, yeah, six right now, prioritize e-commerce teams if WooCommerce is active. So if WooCommerce is active, actually you want to install a team, and, and team discovery has improved tremendously in WordPress these days. The problem is that if you know that WooCommerce is active. It doesn't seem to prioritize WooCommerce teams more. If you go through the keyword search, you want to look for certain teams, you know, a lot of things doesn't get prioritized because you know, for some reason that's how the, the, the team discovery works. But now automatic controls WooCommerce. Why, doesn't, why don't you do that? Right? You got to prioritize the e-commerce teams. And, and that I feel affects the uh, end user experience because users who are not developers and first install WooCommerce, they want to search for a team, they will go to the team installer, uh, got WooCommerce activated and so on. But when they search for a team, none of the teams are actually, well, in the Singaporean term, you know, CMI cannot make it. Right? But in Shopify, that's a very different experience because all those teams are already e-commerce. Right? And you've got very beautiful teams. <coughs> the next advice I want to give is that you know you got to strengthen the code quality of the third party WooCommerce plugins. Ah, shit, a lot of stuff over there is really shit. Right, pardon my French, but it is really shit. So um, when something breaks, um, you got to find that developer and then hopefully that back and forth helps you out. Um, in Shopify, if something breaks, you know they they are held accountable for it. Right, because they are all under the Shopify ecosystem and if something breaks, they just kick you out of the Shopify app platform. Simple as that. Right, and, and Shopify is, is known to just turn off your app if it just doesn't conform to the standards. Um, lastly, you know, um, as anything in Singapore, target Southeast Asia for the next growth goes immediately. Um, I understand that WordPress was actually looking at it a couple of years ago because, you know, um, Fun fact, Indonesia has the second largest WordPress community outside of the English-speaking world. Right? And it's sitting right across the door in Singapore, about half an hour ferry ride, okay? or two hour, or one and a half hour flight to Jakarta. It's right there. How many Indonesians are here? Yang kat All right, all over there. Okay. So you got a very active WordPress community in Indonesia, lots of WordCamps, uh, way more than Singapore has ever had, right? Uh, thousands more developers, right? And you got to focus on it. Southeast Asia has always been tipped as the next wave of growth globally. And I don't understand why Automatic is not looking at it. Right? I don't know if there are any other automaticians in this part of the world, particularly in Southeast Asia. Uh, Philippines, I understand there's a lot of, uh, there's, there's quite a few automaticians, um, but whether specifically they are looking at the next level of growth, I'm not sure. All right? So back to more data. Okay? These are the e-commerce platforms in Singapore. Uh, WooCommerce is still very dominant. Shopify ranks third. Okay? So, Shopify is over here, I think. It's the green one, if I'm not wrong. All right. So, <coughs> for automaticians, you don't need to worry so much. It's, it's still number one. But Shop Shopify is really gaining growth. We've got a lot of things happening in the Shopify space. They've started their communities and so on. It's still very strong in Singapore because e-commerce stores are more rampant here. In Malaysia, how many Malaysians are here? One? 
Oh, okay, that's right. Indonesia, Malaysia, here, yeah, okay. All right, so WooCommerce is still number one, Shopify is number six. All right, um, a lot more open source work in the uh, other Southeast Asian countries. So you go back to Singapore, you know, uh, Shopify ranks higher. That means that there's a lot more users rather than developers here, okay? So a lot more open source work means a lot more people who are developing sites rather than users trying to create the sites themselves. Indonesia, very strangely, WooCommerce is number two. All right, Shopify is also number six over there. So um, a lot of potential for WooCommerce here. All right, so part of my work when I first started out trying to, you know, Shopify WooCommerce uh, was trying to make that experience a lot more seamless. Uh, that project is unfortunately on hold, and uh, because you know, as a logistics company, you got to move your parcels, lah. Right, my my development team is very small, so I don't have enough resources to focus on that at this point in time. All right, so <clears throat> that's all I'm giving right now. These are my references. If you wish to fact check, all right, I'm open for questions. All right. Thank you. Okay, so Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, please ask questions to Hasrul if you have any. Uh, I'll give you guys a minute to maybe think about something. Yep. Yes. Oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, hi sir. Um, I want to ask for Shopify for YouTube, right? Have you any experience in that? Using the Shopify link to put on a YouTube card? I don't know whether it's too... Uh, you mean like, like a YouTube ad? Like uh, because you can put a link right to your YouTube video mm -hmm. and then there's a card that actually uh, can show the Shopify uh, products, you know, if I'm not wrong. This yeah, I, I believe that um, there this, uh, you could put any link there. It doesn't really matter whether it's a Shopify store or not. Oh, yeah, there's an uh, authorized it ad. To be a YouTube yeah, ad. The, the, oh, it's not an ad, it's on their own video. Uh -huh. And then this Shopify is an uh, authorized merchant. Yeah, okay, now I get it. It's an authorized merchant. Not all links can, I don't think, I'm not sure if any links can be used, but I think the authorized merchant for YouTube. Because, yeah, there's a wonder if you have any. No, I'm not aware of it. If uh, time, so okay, now, yeah. thanks. Yes, sir. Uh, Hello there. Um, thank you for sharing with us today. Um, I came a bit late because I was in another uh, conference uh, previously. Um, my question would be, what are the three main things that you think um, WooCommerce has to do to stay ahead of uh, Shopify and be s still number one well, in the future? Um, as, as our founding father would say. Yeah. Well, what, would you, <laughs> what would you recommend them if you yeah. would? Um, <coughs> Basically, WooCommerce needs to think outside of the box. Um, they are very developer centric, and I don't blame them because you know it is developers for developers anyway. But where e-commerce is concerned, you know, if you are a store owner, you don't care what technology is underneath. You just want the damn thing to work, right? So they've got to look at from the from a different perspective. You got to look at from the merchant perspective, all right? Um, and uh, I'll, I'll be frank with you. I, uh, and I know some developers might feel this way. All right. Uh, I hated WooCommerce. I really didn't like it as a WordPress developer. You know, I, I felt that there were other e-commerce plugins out there that was far better at that time. They were just pretty lucky that uh, Automatic decided that you know they are they are better at some things rather than the others. Um, but uh, what one thing I found in other plugins was that it was a lot more user friendly. Right, and that user friendliness needs to be more pervasive in WooCommerce, whether it's on the plugin and all things or the seamlessness and all things. Right, so first thing that needs to happen is that they've got to turn on WooCommerce.com and open it up for seamless onboarding. They got to do that the same way WordPress.com does it. All right, there's still so many people on WordPress.com writing blogs because they don't want to care about running a server. They don't want to care about security. They don't want to care about a lot of things, and merchants, particularly because there's money involved, 
they don't want to care how that technology works, they just want the damn thing to work. All right? So if I'm WooCommerce, I would consider how to SaaS my WooCommerce. That's the first advice I would give. Second advice I would give is that you've got to start investing in uh, the APEC region. Because that's where the next lap of e-commerce growth is going to be. It's no longer the US, it's no longer Europe. It's Asia in this, in this part of the world. All right? And if I'm a serious e-commerce platform, I got to put somebody here and start building that community, investing in that community even more. The thousands of WordPress developers in this part of the world, in India, in the Philippines, in Indonesia, and that's untapped, I feel. Tap them. All right? Third advice I would give is that you have to partner the shipping industry. And any good e-commerce pl platform worth their salt tries to solve this problem to simplify at the last mile. Shopify is doing it damn well. They started working on it. They have now a way to connect with all the shipping platforms. All right? WooCommerce, out of the box, does not do that. You got to install some plugins to do that. You want to do rates, you got to download the Table Rates API. All right? Sorry, not Table Rates plugin, rather. Shopify has that baked in. All right? You want something more fantastic, you got to upgrade your planner. Okay? So partner with the shipping guys, like me. Cool, cool. Thank you. Right. Thank you for the question. Anybody else wants to ask anything more? Oh, okay. We have one more question. Yes. So uh, my question to you will be, WooCommerce is doing a lot of new things uh, from version 3.0, and we'll see probably a lot of uh, more different things in 3.2, 3.3, and a lot of different things. So uh, how those kind of stuff could actually uh, increase the growth of WooCommerce, especially like probably we'll go beyond custom post type and WooCommerce will have their own database table and other things. Yeah. And Automatic will have actually WooCommerce tied up with uh, Jetpack when they will actually offer it as a SaaS in uh, WordPress.com. Do you think like those kind of initiative could actually change the game and it could actually have a good reflect on what's, uh, what will happen in 2018 and 19? Mm. Um, first, first, these are all my opinions, so I don't speak for Automatic. Yeah? Um, um, those are some good strategies that they're trying to take uh, under the hood. Things like uh, shifting away from the WP Post meta and uh, focusing more on CRUD, which is you know uh, delayed. You know, finally you know, <laughs> on CRUD, right? Uh, that would definitely help uh, performance. Uh, as you all know, WooCommerce uh, is still quite weak on performance, uh, but Magento is even shittier, right? <laughs> But Shopify is, is crud from the beginning and it's hosted, right? It's speed. It's really about speed. One, um, one second of waiting time in an e-commerce site, if I'm not wrong, according to the study, I, don't quote me on this because you know, my marriage is quite bad. Uh, one second of an e-commerce site that earns uh, about a monthly average of $30,000 equates to $1,000 worth of loss. All right? And WooCommerce out of the box because it's a self-hosted platform and you've got a developer that doesn't know shit, uh, doesn't know how to optimize a server, doesn't know how to optimize WooCommerce, doesn't know how to optimize the page speed and so on, you're going to lose a lot of money because of the page speed. All right? So uh, uh, those are some ways, but I think, in my opinion, they've got to suss it. I don't know about Jetpack. Frankly, I'm not sure whether that's the right way to go. Because Jetpack is a plugin for me. Sorry, Jetpack guys, I still think it's shit. But um, it's too, it's too, it's too bloated. Jetpack is really bloated out of the hood, All right? Um, I, I feel the best way to go is to start from WooCommerce.com, not Jetpack. Yeah. All right. Do we have any more questions from the audience? All right. One more question. Yeah. Okay. You can have my mic. Yes. Back up the Shopify data and convert it to a <coughs> another form, uh, like another form, another kind of software. Can we back up Shopify in a nutshell? The data, all this, because mm. you see, uh, they actually you buy the plan from Shopify. So 
basically, yeah, la, the data is yeah. with them. Actually. Mm. Yeah. It's a very good question. I, I, uh, I can't really say for sure because I am not really a power Shopify user. I'll ask my colleague for that. But my understanding is that probably you can to, to export the data out because you know Canada has very strong uh, data laws laws. Right? So you, you need to be able to port your data over to other platforms and that has to be accessible from the beginning. Um, but yeah, there, there, there are also plugins that allow you to do that, like the litmus converter, if I'm not wrong, where you could uh, uh, migrate from one platform to another. I believe Shopify is one of those platforms as well. Yeah. All right, moving on. Come on, people, don't be shy. Ask questions. No? No questions at all? All right. So let's wrap this talk up. Thank you very much, Hazrul, for your excellent talk and answering all.